by imbibition seeds absorb water and they swell. Once they swell, the seed coat is broken. The first structure that comes out is radical. The structure followed is plumule. Radical develops into root system. Plumule develops into shoot system. So that is how seed germination takes place. Next, the root system is broadly divided into two types. One is tap root system. The other is adventitious root system and fibrous root system. One is tap root system, the other is adventitious R and fibrous root system. In tap root system, radical directly develops into a root. Radical is persistent, it directly develops into a root. Lateral roots, root hair, all are present and it is found in dicots. Almost all dicots show tap root system. Then adventitious root system. Here radical is ephemeral. Ephemeral means short living. Radical is ephemeral, short living. Any part of the plant except radical suppose produces a root system, then it is called adventitious root system. It is found in monocots and some dicots. Fibrous root system, a bunch of adventitious roots present at the base of the stem or basal node. It is found in monocots. So, this is about types of roots, what is meant by a tap root and what is meant by a adventitious root or a bunch of adventitious roots formed from the basal nodes called as fibrous roots. Radical is persistent in tap roots, radical is ephemeral short living in adventitious roots. Next comes modifications. Any permanent change that occur in a root to store food material, to perform mechanical function or to do some special function or to provide mechanical support, whatever it may be, that is popularly called modification. Root modifications are of different types. One root crops or storage roots or tuberous roots root crops or storage roots or tuberous roots. The name itself indicates the root is used as a crop. The name itself indicates the root stores food material. The roots show different tuberous shapes. In this, by the storage of food material, tap root modifications are in raffinous radish, it is fusiform. In raffinous radish, it is fusiform. In beta vulgaris beetroot, it is nappy form. Upper portion is very large, lower portion is completely narrow, is nappy form. In docus carrot, it is conical. So, in taproot modification, storage of food material, raffinous radish fusiform, beta vulgaris beetroot, nappy form, docus carota carrot conical, these are all tap root modifications. There are adventitious root modifications also which are formed by the storage of food material. They are fasciculated. Fasciculated root means a bunch of tuberous roots. That means a bunch of adventitious roots, a bunch of fibrous roots, they store food material and become tuberous. Dicots like Dahlia, Ruyalia, monocot like asparagus show fasciculated roots. Dicots like Dhalia, Ruyalia, monocot like asparagus shows fasciculated roots. Then tuberous roots. In a plant by name sweet potato, in a plant by name sweet potato. Ipomia batatas, the botanical name is Ipomia batatas. A single adventitious root stores food material and become tuberous. 
only one adventitious root will be there that single adventitious root store food material and become tuberous. All these roots are all these root crops are biennials that means they live for 2 years, but they are harvested in the first year itself. All these are biennials live for 2 years, but harvested in the first year itself. Why? Because in the first year they show vegetative growth, in the second year they show reproductive growth. During reproductive growth they use the food present in their roots to avoid that danger these are harvested in the first year itself. Coming to the reserve food material in beta vulgari snappy form the reserve food material is sugar. In the case of dhalia the reserve food material is inulin. In the case of ibombia batatas it is again sugar. So, root crops always store carbohydrates or sugars and they are very very important economically and also commercially. That is about root crops. Next second is epiphytic roots. Plants which grow on other plants only for mechanical support are called epiphytes. Epiphytes are also popularly regarded as plant showing tree top habit. That means these found in evergreen forests. Epiphytic plants are found in evergreen forests. In evergreen forests, the small plants growing in the shades cannot get enough sunlight. For want of sunlight, they grow attached to the branches of huge forest trees. For attachment, these epiphytes show two types of roots. One is clinging roots. Clinging roots means small finger shaped roots which attaches the epiphytic plant to the crevices of the branches not only attaches but also helps in absorbing some minerals. Then velamen roots, long freely hanging much branched brown colored special roots which are surrounded by a special hygroscopic tissue called velamen tissue are called as velamen roots. So, a single plant is showing two types of roots hence it is called as dimorphic. So, dimorphic roots are found in epiphytic plants. Now, clinging roots helps in attachment, velamen roots helps in absorbing moisture. Whenever velamen roots absorb moisture, very little amount of water will be there. These plants do not have any contact with the soil. That is why in order to conserve the water, these plants also show xerophytic adaptations. The best example is many orchids and one individual example is Vanta. So, many orchids show epiphytic roots, particular example will be Vanda, plants which grow on other plants only for support, particularly popularly known as tree top habit, clinging roots, velamen roots, what is velamen tissue and they also why they are showing xerophytic adaptations. The particular example will be orchids and individual example will be Vanda. This is about epiphytic roots. Next comes photosynthetic roots. Normally roots are brown in color, they do not possess any chlorophyll, absolutely they are not helping in performing any photosynthesis, but some roots get chlorophyll, some roots get chlorophyll and perform photosynthesis. Best example is Tineophyllum. Tineophyllum is a stemless and leafless plant. It do not have any stem, it do not have any leaf. It has long ribbon shape, long ribbon shape chlorophyllous roots performing photosynthesis. Another important feature is Tineophyllum is an epiphyte. So, an epiphyte with uh, velamen roots and photosynthetic roots is tineophyll, an important bit for M set. So, velamen roots and photosynthetic roots containing epiphytic plant is tineophyll. Second example is trapa. Trapa is an aquatic plant. Trapa is an aquatic plant where submerged roots are green chlorophyllous and perform photosynthesis. 
then next example is Tinospora. Tinospora is a lion. Lion means large woody climbers growing on huge forest trees. This Tinospora aerial roots contain chlorophyll and perform photosynthesis. So, these are the examples of third type of root modification that is photosynthetic roots. So, photosynthetic roots means green chlorophyllous roots performing photosynthesis and these roots are found in Tineophyllum which is a stemless leafless plant where roots become green chlorophyllous perform photosynthesis. Trapa an aquatic plant where submerged roots become green and perform photosynthesis. Tinospora <coughs> a plant where aerial roots become green chlorophyllous and perform photosynthesis. Now coming to the fourth one respiratory roots. Respiratory roots are also called breathing roots. Respiratory roots or breathing roots are also called nematophores. These are the alternative names of respiratory roots. Respiratory roots are normally found in a group of plants called <coughs> mangroves. Why? Mangroves normally grow in water logged conditions. Mangroves normally grow in water logged conditions. Water logged condition means soil is less, water is more. Whenever water is more, oxygen will be definitely less. Whenever water is more, oxygen is less. So, normal root system get, cannot get enough oxygen from the soil. For that purpose, these plants develop some special negatively geotropic roots. These are the only negatively geotropic roots in plant kingdom. These negatively geotropic roots grow above the soil around the stem and these negatively geotropic roots contain minute pores called pneumathodes. Through these pneumathodes, oxygen is absorbed, carbon dioxide is liberated out. Because oxygen is absorbed and carbon dioxide is liberated out, they are called as respiratory roots. Because oxygen is absorbed and carbon dioxide is liberated out, they are called as breathing roots. Because they contain small pores called nematodes and grow like small stalks, they are called as nematophores. I will repeat it again. Respiratory roots are also called breathing roots, they are also called nematophores. They are normally found in a group of plants called mangroves. Mangroves normally grow in waterlogged conditions. What is a waterlogged condition? <coughs> Soil is less, water is more. Whenever water is more, oxygen is less. Whenever oxygen is less, the normal root system cannot get enough oxygen. For that purpose, these plants specially develop negatively geotropic roots around the stem above the soil. Those special negatively geotropic roots formed above the stem around the soil or above the soil around the stem contain minute pores called nematodes. Through these nematodes, oxygen is absorbed, carbon dioxide is liberated out. That is why they are called as breathing roots or respiratory roots or nematophores. The best examples are mangroves like Avicennia, Rhizophora. These two definitely show respiratory roots. One important bit is there is an aquatic plant by name Jessia repens. This Jessia repens shows special spongy breathing roots. There is an aquatic plant by name Jessia repens. In addition to normal adventitious roots, this plant will definitely show special spongy breathing roots. So, name an aquatic plant with both adventitious normal roots and special spongy breathing roots means Jessia repens. This is about the fourth special type of root modification that is respiratory roots. Now coming to the next type of root modification, nodular roots. This is the other type of root modification. We discussed about root crops, storage roots with the three types of tap root modifications, two types of adventitious roots, why they are harvested in the first year itself and what type of food is stored in tuberous roots. Next the plants growing on other plants only for mechanical support, epiphytic plants and they show different types of clinging roots and development roots. Then third we discussed about photosynthetic roots where roots performing photosynthesis like tineophyllum, trapa, 
tinospora the speciality of tineophyllum the speciality of tropa and speciality of tinospora must be understood then respiratory roots why some plants growing in water logged conditions develop special respiratory root means because they cannot get enough oxygen from the soil why because in the soil lot of water will be there whenever water is there oxygen percentage will be less and this oxygen percentage makes the plants not to get enough oxygen by normal root system so they develop respiratory roots avicennia rhizophora are mangroves with respiratory roots there is one aquatic plant with normal adventitious roots and special spongy breathing roots jessia repens now coming to nodular roots nodular roots are found in legumes in legumes also particularly plants of fabaceae the special feature of this is roots show nodules roots show nodules means special bulged structures are called nodules nodules show a symbiotic association with a special bacterium called rhizobium these are all found in leguminous plants particularly plants of fabaceae here in the plants of fabaceae root system is a tap root system which definitely shows special bulged structures called nodules these nodules contain a special bacterium called rhizobium which leads a symbiotic life symbiotic life means two totally different organisms living together and getting benefited two completely different organisms living together and both are getting benefited is called as symbiosis so rhizobium lives here and rhizobium helps in nitrogen fixation that's why the plants of fabaceae are widely used in crop rotation and also used as green manure green manure means plants are spreaded on the soil they were allowed to decay and nitrogen content is increased crop rotation means crops are repeated with leguminous crops why because the plant will show special tap roots tap roots will show nodules nodules will show symbiosis with a special bacterium called rhizobium and rhizobium helps in nitrogen fixation why rhizobium helps in nitrogen fixation because rhizobium contains a special enzyme called dinitrogenase which can break the triple bond between nitrogen so dinitrogenase can bring break the triple bond between dinitrogen another important feature is this dinitrogenase becomes inactive even if traces of oxygen is there even a small amount of oxygen is there in the surroundings of dinitrogenase definitely it will become inactive that danger is avoided by a special pink colored pigment present in the root nodules called leg hemoglobin there is a special pink colored pigment called leg hemoglobin which makes the dinitrogenase not to get exposed to oxygen this is a very important aspect special pink colored pigment leg hemoglobin protects the dinitrogenase from the toxic effect of oxygenase example red gram almost all grams groundnut tephrosia crotalaria almost all majority of the plants of fabaceae shows nodular roots what are nodular roots these are found in legumes plants of fabaceae particularly which are showing root nodules root nodules nodules show the presence of rhizobium which is showing symbiotic association like these help in nitrogen fixation for nitrogen fixation they have a special enzyme called dinitrogenase dinitrogenase can break the triple bond stable triple bond between dinitrogen another danger is dinitrogenase cannot function in the presence of oxygen so the traces of oxygen is removed by a special pink colored pigment called leg hemoglobin this is about the special nodular roots so you have to remember how a nodule is formed then what is the bacterium living in the nodule and most important is how nitrogen is fixed by nodules what is meant by rhizobium how rhizobium is helping in this concept and rhizobium containing a special enzyme called dinitrogenase dinitrogenase breaking the triple bond between dinitrogen 
how it is breaking in the absence of oxygen. So, whatever oxygen in the surroundings must be removed by that special pink colored pigment in the root nodules called leg hemoglobin. Now, coming to other type of roots called parasitic roots. Previously, I told about epiphytic roots. The plants which depend on other plants only for mechanical support are called epiphytic plants. The plants which grow on other plants completely for food, for shelter, for support, everything are called as parasitic plants. The roots present in the parasitic plants are called parasitic roots. These parasitic roots speciality is they develop a special, special structure called hostoria. That is why parasitic roots are also called as hostorial roots. They are also known as hostorial roots. Hostoria penetrate into the host. The plant on which parasite is depending is called host. Hostoria penetrate into the host and get connected to xylem or phloem or both and start collecting the necessary substances from the host. Based on collecting the food material from the host, parasites are divided into two types, complete parasites, partial or incomplete parasites, complete parasites, partial or incomplete parasites. Complete parasites are non-green, they are totally non-green, partial parasites are green. Complete parasites take food, water and minerals from the host. Complete parasites will take food, water and minerals from the host. Partial parasites take only water and minerals from the host. Why? Because they are green in color, they can synthesize their own food matter. So, in complete parasite, hostoria is connected to both xylem and phloem. This is important. Hostoria are connected to both xylem and phloem because from xylem they get water and minerals, from phloem they get food mat. In incomplete parasite, hostoria is connected only to xylem, not to phloem because they can synthesize their own food material and they depend on the host only for water and minerals. In these parasites or parasitic roots, once again I will repeat, parasites are the plants which depend on other plants completely for food, water and minerals and other things. These parasitic plants develop special roots called hostorial roots. Hostorial root penetrates into the host, get connected to xylem and phloem. After getting connected to xylem and phloem, they start absorbing necessary food and water and mineral nutrients. Depending on the components obtained from the host. Parasitic plants are divided into two types, complete parasites, incomplete or partial parasites. Complete parasite is one which is non-green. Complete parasite is one where hostoria is connected to both xylem and phloem. Complete parasite is one which depends on the host for water, mineral and food. Hostoria is connected to both xylem and phloem. Incomplete parasites are green in color. Their hostoria are connected only to xylem because they can synthesize their own food material. They depend on the host only for water and minerals. Now, in this complete and incomplete parasites, there are some special examples, complete and partial. In complete parasites, there are two categories, complete stem parasites and complete root parasites. In partial also, there are two categories, partial stem parasites and partial root parasites. Complete stem parasite, the best example is cascuta, which is otherwise popularly called daughter plant. The host of cascuta is durantha. You all know durantha is a plant where thorn bears leaves and flowers. So, cascuta is a daughter plant, it is a complete stem parasite, it normally grows on a host called durantha. And there is another complete stem parasite which is called Arsithobium. Arsithobium is regarded as the smallest parasitic plant. Arsithobium is the smallest parasitic plant. Then complete root parasite. Complete root parasites, the best examples are Rafflesia. Rafflesia is 
a complete root parasite with the largest flowers in plant kingdom. So, you have to remember this. The largest flowers of plant kingdom are found in Rafflesia. Largest flowers of plant kingdom. Then, Orobanke. Orobanke grows only on tobacco plants. This is an important bit. Orobanke depends or grows only on tobacco plants. The roots of tobacco plants are the places where Orobanke grows. There is another complete root parasite called Belanophora. The speciality of Belanophora is this is a complete root parasite with scale leaves. These are all important for M set. So, a complete stem parasite is Cascuta, daughter plant where the host is Durantha. Another smallest complete stem parasite is Arsutobium. Complete root parasites, Rafflesia, a plant with the largest leaves, Orobanke, the plant which grows only on the roots of tobacco plants, Belenophora, a parasitic plant which is having scale leaves. Scale leaves is a special character of xerophytes, but this Belenophora also contains scale leaves. Then coming to partial parasites, you all know partial parasite means they depend on the host only for water and minerals they can synthesize their own food mate. The partial stem parasites are Viscum and Loranthus. The partial stem parasites best example is Viscum and Loranthus. There is another example also Cassitha. This Cassitha will come in the flower valvular dehiscence. So, Cassitha is stamens valvular dehiscence that is we discuss in flower. So, Partial stem parasite is Viscum, Loranthus, Cassitha. Partial root parasite. Partial root parasites are two. One is Triga, the other is Santalum album. Santalum album is nothing but sandalwood plant. The speciality of Striga is it is a partial root parasite mostly on maize partial root parasite mostly on maize roots. Santalum album, sandalwood, very important bit, very, very important bit. It is a partial root parasite only in its seedling stage. A partial root parasite only in its seedling stage is Santalum album, sandalwood plant, a partial root parasite only in a seedling stage and after becoming adult or old, it can lead its independent life. So, this is about parasitic roots. I will repeat this. Parasitic plants are the plants which depend on other plants either completely or almost totally for shelter, for food, for everything. These parasitic plant speciality is they contain parasitic roots. Parasitic root speciality is they develop special roots called hostorial roots. The Hostoria speciality is it is a small hand or whatever it may be, it is a special special appendage which penetrates into the host and collects the necessary material from the host. What are those material? Food, water and minerals. Based on the food material or based on the components obtained from the host, these are divided into two types, complete parasites, partial or incomplete parasite. Complete parasite is one which is non-green. Complete parasite is one which depends on the host for food, water and mineral ions. Complete parasite is one where Hostoria is connected to both xylem and phloem. Coming to partial, partial parasites are green in color. Partial parasites can synthesize their own food material. They depend on the host only for water and minerals. There are some, and here the Hostoria are connected only to the xylem but not to the phloem. These are broadly divided into two categories, partial sorry complete stem parasites, cascuta daughter plant which host is Durantha, a smallest parasitic plant called Arsutobium, then complete root parasites Rafflesia. Rafflesia speciality is it is the largest flowers of plant kingdom. Orobanke, it is a plant which grows only on tobacco plants, in Telugu it is called Pogakumale, the name of this plant is Pogakumale which grows on the roots of tobacco plants. There is a plant by name Belanophora where the root or where the complete root parasite shows scale leaves. Then partial, partial stem parasite Viscum 
Loranthus cassita. Viscum Loranthus cassita are partial stem parasites, partial root parasites. Striga, which grows only on maize plants. Santalum album sandalwood plant, which is a partial root parasite only in its seedling stage. In stem, they are attached to endarch xylem. This is also asked sometimes. In root, they are attached to exarch xylem. Exarch xylem. In stem again, endarch xylem. In root again, exarch xylem. So, name a partial root parasite which is attached to endarch xylem. Name a partial, will partial root parasite or partial parasite which attached to exarch xylem. That means a root. So, this is about root modifications. This is about root. Root is underground part of the plant body with positive geotropism and negative phototropism. Root, how it forms, then what are the important aspects of roots? What is the basic difference between root system and shoot system? Then we discussed about root modifications. Several root modifications we discovered. One is tuberous roots or storage roots or root crops. The other is epiphytic roots. All root crops are biennials, but they are harvested in the first year itself. Then we discussed about epiphytic roots. Then we discussed about photosynthetic roots. Then we discussed about respiratory roots or breathing roots or nematophores. Then we discussed about various types of nodular roots and other things. And finally, we discussed about parasitic roots, complete root parasites, partial root parasites, complete stem parasites, complete root parasites, partial stem parasites, partial root parasites, Hastoria, how it is connected to various plant parts and many other examples. Now, we discuss some important bits in this root system. Coming to the first question, match the following, Raphanus and other things, answer is 1. <coughs> dicot with tuberous tap root is Raphanus, Dahlia is dicot with a group of tuberous roots that is fasciculated root storing inulin, Asparagus is monocot with cluster of tuberous roots storing starch, Beta vulgaris dicot, dicot without a stem or dicot with tuberous root storing sugars. Next, choose the correct statement from the following. Only third one is correct. Dicot with adventitious root system are present, but monocots with tap root system are completely absent. You do not find any monocot with tap root system, but dicots may be seen with adventitious root system like runners, suckers, stolons, offsets. Next, study the following table. Here the answer is 1 and 3 are correct combinations because adventitious roots are processing hostoria, they are found in Santalum. Then third one, axillary bud bulbil in Dioscoria we discuss in the next chapter that is in stem. Next, arrange the following plants in a sequence where the roots are modified to absorb mineral water or organic material. Just now I told about this percentage. Answer is first Loranthus, then Striga, then Cascuta. Next. Find out the incorrect statement from the following. Asparagus, tineophyllum, dolichus and loranthus have modified adventitious roots. It is a wrong statement. Next, the false statement regarding Vanda. Third one, it possesses roots useful for fixing the plant into the soil and absorbing water. Vanda is an epiphyte which does not show any kind of roots attached to the soil. Next, study the following and following set of characters and identify those sets of characters in which former set of characters are present in Trapa and latter set of characters are absent in Tinospora. Answer is 1 and 2. Next, photosynthetic parasites are Viscum, Santalum, Loranthus. Viscum and Loranthus are partial stem parasites. Santalum is a partial root parasite. Next. This is a matching tabular form, epiphytic plant with uh, tuberous roots, epiphyte belonging to orchidaceae with dead hygroscopic tissue, epiphyte storing food material in the internode and hydrophyte with uh, submerged photosynthetic roots, answer will be 3. 3 is A5, B4, C2 and D3. Next, root apex is covered by calyptra. This is correct, calyptra is nothing but root cap. 
Calyptra covers the growing ponds of tap root as well as lateral roots. It is not the correct explanation that is why A and R are true, R is not the correct explanation of A. Next, <coughs> assertion reasoning, shoot system is absent in tineophyllum is correct. The green vellum and roots of tineophyllum perform photosynthesis is also correct, but both these are not related that is why A and R are true, R is not the correct explanation of A. Next. And again assertion, epiphytes can absorb water even without root hair. In epiphytes absence of root hair is completely compensated by velament issue. So, first option A and R are correct, R is the correct explanation of A. Next, pair of plants where radically short lived, radically short lived means adventitious roots are present or fibrous roots are present. Example is sorghum and boracus because their tap root is gone and adventitious roots are formed. Next. Pick out the plant with aerial photosynthetic roots, tineophyllum and tinospora. Why trapa and typha means typha absolutely not shows photosynthetic roots. In trapa, submerged roots are photosynthetic in nature. Next, the number of plants and number of tuberous roots harvested are in 1 is to 1 ratio in this plant means any biennial plant like raffanus. Raffanus, they are harvested and the ratio is 1 is to 1 ratio. Next. A dicot plant with fasciculated tuberous roots, just now I told Dhalia and Ruyalia 2 and 4, they are dicots with fasciculated tuberous roots. Next, this is assertion, the calm of Amorphophallus will grow at a particular depth in the soil. The calm of Amorphophallus has pull roots on its surface, actually it is belonging to stem bit, but because we are discussing root, to explain about pull, pull roots this question is given. So, A and R are correct, R is the correct explanation of A. Next, the correct statement regarding dahlia and asparagus respectively is fourth one. Farmer is a dicot, farmer means dahlia is a dicot with fasciculated root storing inulin. Latter means asparagus is a monocot with fasciculated root storing starch. That is the correct answer in the four. Next, select the correct statement. Stem parasites are always complete parasites, we cannot say it. Appendages of stem are always exogenous wrong, they are endogenous sometimes. Appendages of root are always exogenous wrong because lateral roots are endogenous. Epiphytes are not parasites is a correct statement. Epiphytes are not parasites. Next, identify the correct statement in the following. Santalum penetrates hostoria into xylem and phloem are incorrect. Santalum is a partial root parasite, it cannot penetrate its hostoria into both xylem and phloem because partial parasites can synthesize their own food, they depend on the host only for water and minerals. So, their hostoria is penetrated only into the xylem, not into the phloem. So, this is the correct option. Okay. So, this is the chapter with important bits that is root. I wish you all success.